So here we're beginning to look at some arithmetic with vectors. So we're going to do this in three dimensions, but note that this arithmetic is going to hold true in n-dimensional space or in Rn. So to begin, let's let vector u be defined by the components u sub 1, u sub 2, u sub 3, and let vector v be defined by the components v sub 1, v sub 2, v sub 3. And these are two vectors again in space. We also want to go ahead and let C be any scalar we want, so meaning any constant value. So how do we define the sum of these two vectors? Well, vector u plus vector v means that we're going to add up the like components. So we can start here and say we have our first vector u sub 1, u sub 2, u sub 3, and we are adding vector v which is v sub 1, v sub 2, v sub 3. And again, you're adding the like components. So that means I'm adding those x components together. I'm adding the y components together. And then I'll add the z components together. So this vector leaves us with u sub 1 plus v sub 1. We have u sub 2 plus v sub 2. And last but not least, we have u sub 3 plus v sub 3. So what does this look like graphically? So let's begin, let's suppose here that in space, I'm thinking about the x, y, and z axes, and I'm just thinking about the first octant. So this is where each variable is positive. And so we'll say here is vector u. There's our vector u in space. And we have a vector v as well that lives, we'll say, right about here. So how do we find the sum of these two vectors? Well, we're going to use what is known as the parallelogram rule. The parallelogram rule. So the parallelogram rule tells us if we are looking for the sum of the two vectors. So we start with u. So from the terminal point of u, I want to now draw a new vector that is parallel to v. So we can say, again, if you have graphing paper, that'll make this a little bit easier. But we'll try our best here. So this is our vector v, and it's, again, parallel to the vector below it. So notice that we've created a parallelogram here. This side is going to be equivalent to u. But again, keep in mind that we're only looking for u plus v. So, to define that new vector, we start at the origin and move right along the diagonal of our parallelogram. So this purple vector here is vector u plus vector v. So let's now consider the difference of two vectors. So we'll begin by using the same vectors as before, we use vector u and vector v. So here we're thinking about what is vector u minus vector v. So vector u is defined by the components u sub 1, u sub 2, u sub 3. And this time we are subtracting vector v with the components v sub 1, v sub 2, v sub 3. So just like we saw with addition, we're going to combine the like components. So we need to combine the x components, we need to combine the y components, and we need to combine the z components, being mindful of the negative. So here we are left with the vector defined as u sub 1 minus v sub 1, u sub 2 minus v sub 2, and u sub 3 minus v sub 3. So what does this look like graphically? So again, we'll think about the first octant here in space, and we'll say here is our beautiful vector u, and over here is our beautiful vector v. And how do we find the difference of these two vectors graphically? So again, we are using that parallelogram rule. So again, keep in mind here, keeping that parallelogram rule in mind, we are now subtracting vector v 
from you. So another way to think about this, we can say that vector u minus vector v is just like saying vector u plus a negative version of vector v. So what this negative is telling us is that this is vector v, but it's pointing in the opposite direction. So that negative scalar multiple, multiple indicates that the vector v is pointing in the opposite direction. So it still has the same length, but it points in the opposite direction. All right, so here we go. And keeping the parallelogram rule in mind, we want vector u plus negative vector v. So we have vector u, so we're right here at the terminal point of vector u, and we want to add vector v, but this time it's going to be pointing in the opposite direction. So again, we're going to draw that equivalent vector v, but it's pointing in the opposite direction. So this is minus vector v. So in order to attain vector u minus v, we start at the origin and draw the directed line segment to that terminal point. So this purple vector here is representing vector u minus vector v. And last but not least, we need to look at scalar multiples of a vector. So here, we're going to take our vector u, but now we're going to multiply it by that scalar, or that constant c. So we can say that this is equal to our constant c multiplied by the components of vector u, so u sub 1, u sub 2, u sub 3. And then applying the distributive property, we can rewrite this, in, this vector in an equivalent form, c times u sub 1, c times u sub 2, c times u sub 3. Now, depending upon the value of c will dictate how it affects vector u. So we have three cases here. So let's suppose if our c, our scalar, is greater than 1. So if our scalar c is greater than 1, then vector u is stretched by a factor of c. So it is stretched by a factor of c. So let's go ahead and think about what this is going to look like graphically. So in space here, we have our beautiful vector u. So I want to begin by supposing we have some scalar c where c is greater than 1. So this means that u times that scalar c is going to be c times as big as vector u. So this new red vector here is c times vector u such that c is greater than 1. Case number 2. So what is going to happen if our scalar is greater than 0 but less than 1? Well, this means that our vector u is compressed by a factor of c. So in other words, it's shrinking. So again, let's think about this graphically. So we have our beautiful vector u here, and we want to consider what's going to happen visually if we consider multiplying this vector by a scalar that is a fraction, a positive fraction or decimal. So that means u is shrinking or compressing by a factor of c. So this new green vector here is c times vector u, such that our constant scalar c is greater than 0, but less than 1. And we have one more case to consider. So we're thinking to ourselves, what's going to happen if c is negative? If our scalar c is less than 0? Well, if we think back to the difference of two vectors, we know that this scalar multiple is going to point in the opposite direction. So we can say that vector u points in the opposite direction because our scalar is negative. And then depending on the value of c, it follows case 1 and 2 accordingly. So it follows case 1 and 2 according to the value of c. And one more time, let's think about what this looks like visually. So again, we're starting with that vector u. And this time, 
we want to think what's happening when our scalar multiple is negative. So this means our vector here, c times u, is pointing in the opposing direction. So this is our scalar multiple, c times vector u, such that c is less than 0. Now, looking at this beautiful graph here, we notice it appears like all of these vectors are on the same line. But we know that position of vectors is irrelevant. So in theory, we can take all of these vectors and line them up next to each other. So here, we are taking all of our vectors off of the three-dimensional coordinate system and lining them up. What do you observe about these four vectors? They're parallel. Woohoo! So they are parallel vectors. So this leads us to our definition of parallel vectors in three dimensions. So here is our definition. And let's do this in Rn. So we're going to let vector u and vector v be two distinct vectors in Rn. Then we can say that vector u and vector v are parallel if they're scalar multiples. So two vectors, two or more vectors, are parallel if they are scalar multiples of each other. So vector u is equal to some scalar multiple of vector v. And of course, we can go in the opposing direction as well. So we're now ready. Let's take all of this knowledge and look at some examples.